Should I send a reminder to Ted? Good morning, guys. We have uh, our regular attendance now. Is everybody connected with audio? And can you hear me? Yes. Hi, guys. I can hear you. Wonderful. Good morning again. And just to get started, this is uh, sixth interim. And um, we think this must be the last one before we go for face-to-face -face meeting in Vancouver. Um, essentially, the idea is whatever we discuss today, after that, all the changes we can make to the document and publish it for people to um, review it before the, and then have it ready with cutoff deadline in mind. Um, note well. Note well, we will continue to follow IETF policies and guidelines, so please be careful about what you say and share on this virtual meeting. All right, this is where I stop. Dan, do you want to add something? Oh, Darren disappeared. All right, uh, Ted, go ahead. How do uh, do you want to do the same format? Uh, share the screen and go through issue list. Yeah, that sounds fine. Hang on a sec. Uh, first, I have to actually get up the issue list. <laughs> Okay. All right, so I will now share my screen. Brace yourself. Okay, so. Uh, hey, sorry to interrupt, Ted, I'm, I'm back, folks. I Mic problems. <laughs> and Karen, I didn't I didn't want to add anything. Uh, I agreed last one. Thanks, Ted and everyone for getting this far. Yeah. All right. So then the question is, wh where do we start? Um, last time we saw our heroes. Uh, so I was going to add a state machine, but I haven't done that yet. So uh, I don't think we really make sense to talk about that here. Uh, we had been working on this one. Let me just see. I don't remember how far we got. Uh, so there's three commits. Uh, I know there's a way to look at this. Uh, sorry, quick question, Ted. Are you sharing your screen now? Uh, and other, yeah, do can others? you guys not see it? I don't see it. No. Does okay. anybody else see it? I'm seeing it. I, I can see, see it. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay let me do rejoin. Let me do rejoin. I'll let you rejoin back. So I think this one looked like it was hopefully finished. Not by uh, me. I, I sort of thought we'd finished it. I just um, I'm trying to figure out a way to actually look at it. Um, uh, keep, uh, Yes. Yeah, so um, I know there's a way. Normally, there's a way commits, to look at click files. On the, this branch is three commits ahead. Just click on the three commits. Sure. There you go. All right. Uh, here we go. Oh, wow, we only changed one and file. You can scroll down. Yeah. Yep. Oh, here we go. All right. Great. Okay. So let's see. So we changed terminology glossary, which was sort of unrelated. Uh, this is. It's really hard to look at it this way. Hang on a sec. Let me just. Uh, Uh, 
Okay, so um, I'm, it might make sense if we're going to actually look at stuff. I also have an Emacs window that we can that I can share, but unfortunately, I can't share my screen, so we'll have to stop and restart. So I'm just looking at the Emacs because it's a little easier to read than these diffs. Um, well, actually, I guess the diffs aren't that bad. Um, so. So we had, I think we had finished uh, dealing with router advertisements on infrastructure. And then the question is, is our router advertisements on the sub network good? Because we've now added this. Um, yeah, I believe we were done with this part. Yeah, I'm just, so if that's true, then um, is there a reason that we haven't just uh, committed this and closed the issue? Let's uh, let me just kick off the pull request and uh, um, we'll double check it and acknowledge and close it. Okay. So you'll do that. Ted, did sure. you try XML page for you? Did I try what? Uh, oh, no, I, I did not get a chance, Karen. Yeah, that's, that's okay. right. So I did not. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I will in the background as we go on with this meeting. Okay. All right, so we can forget about issue 36. Uh, so issue 37, more details on DHCP, V6, PD, renew, rebind conditions, and AIL change. So uh, so I think Esco, you're, is Esco here? Esco's not here. All right, so let's let's leave this one until Esco's here. Um, okay, so this was also opened by Esco. Okay, this one was opened by you, Kieran. Uh, Stub router deprecating its on link prefix seems underspecified. Did we already talk about this one last time? Yeah. Yeah, so you ended up opening another issue for this. Okay. So, uh, right, we need to have an explicit state machine for the stub router online prefix. So, all right, so so that's the thing we need to do. Um, let's see what other stuff we have. This, this is not exactly low hanging fruit. Um, consistent terms for the flag bits. I think we're, we, we did maybe, that. we did that, yeah. So. All right, and then use consistent caps for terms. Um, these are trivial editorial things that one of us can just do. Um, so the security considerations section right now. Um, At least in Appendix, we wrote a little bit about RA guards. So some text has been covered there. OK. I'm not seeing a security consideration section in the document. Am I just missing it? Am I looking at the right document? There is not one. Right. Okay. So, so we definitely need to have a security consideration section. Um, it's not clear to me. I mean, we talked about things we could put in it last time. I guess maybe there was a pull request with with this. Yeah. Here we go. Um, oh no, that's just a an issue. No, that's that's not an issue. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, so uh, this document has no IANA actions. Uh, Right. Um, yeah. So I think this this is good as written. Um, 
but uh, so we could just merge this. Um, I know there were some other issues, but since we're tracking those other issues as other issues, we could just merge this and then do that. The other issues as a different pull request. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So uh, that's not the thing. There we go. Okay, so we should be able to just do that. Hopefully that means that we got to change. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. Okay. So now we have a security consideration section. Excellent. And we've closed an issue. It's very exciting. And the issue has gone away from the issue list, which is even more exciting. Okay, so decide on the stub router flag bit position is really not up to us. So, uh, or that is to say, I think we've already done a call for adoption, which at this point, I think has enough yes votes to have passed. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, so I guess, can... I guess the, yeah. So the plan is to just keep that one open. So change stub router to snack router. Uh, I mean, this is a trivial editorial thing. I don't think we need the whole working group to watch that happen. Um, I had a note about IPv4 hosts communicating with stub hosts. Okay, so this would be a good thing to work on. Um, is that, does that make sense? Yeah, and which section will this go to? Right, so I'm just looking at, so we have a section that says providing reachability to IPv4 services on the stub network. So I'm assuming that, that the ask here is for something in the introduction, because we don't mention IPv4 in the introduction at all. Um, yeah, but then uh, introduction will become um, more verbose or more complicated if we start <laughs> thinking, um, yeah. that they can receive connection from i'm okay with the first part but the second thing that receive connections from that requires an explanation which can be outside introduction all right so what we have in this in the section on there's a section called providing reachability to ipv4 services to the stub network uh so stub network routers must be capable of providing NAT64 themselves and must be capable of discovering. So uh, maybe the right thing to do here is just clarify the goals in this section, because right now this section doesn't say why stub network routers must provide NAT64, it just says they must. So uh, I'm gonna just, uh, let's see, uh, let me stop sharing this and then start sharing Emacs. Can you, yeah, thanks. Oops. Okay, can you guys see this all right? Uh, generally, a fuzzy. Yeah. This a little little bit. Bigger. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm thinking that we just need a new paragraph here. Uh, 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 snack, might as well use the right term, rely on IPv6 uh, to support, enable routing between links, which would not be 
IPv4 due to the lack of Okay, so there we have our motivating paragraph. Does that address the issue? This does not say um, the direction that um, you said we can receive from IPv4 but cannot send to IPv4. That was the issue. Uh, okay, so, all right, so let me add a little bit more text. Actually, maybe it'd be better to say uh, there was no easy way. I'm now getting very verbose, so we can potentially pare this down. Um, but basically, this is this is really making it clear, right? Like, like basically, we're uh, so the purpose of providing IPv4 connectivity for 
snack host is to enable Okay, so we now have many paragraphs about this. I, I think this is actually an improvement. I don't actually feel like this is a waste to talk about, um, but it does add three paragraphs. Yeah, uh, it, only thing that comes to my mind is that should we split the section between IPv4 services and IPv4 host, um, does that make a difference or is it okay to keep them together? Well, I mean, a service, an IPv4 service is a service on an IPv4 only host. And we should actually, we should say IPv4 dash only services. Uh, only um, objection I have is where we have written that uh, there should not be any host in the infra infrastructure network that can't communicate with the host. If you consider the security framework, we may not want to allow all the hosts to talk to the stub network. Um, the reasons might be different, but. Uh... So that's that's really out of scope here, though, right? OK. Right, like we're not actually we don't have a security framework for this. Like we're, we're our goal is is to make it possible for hosts on infrastructure to talk to hosts on the snack network and vice versa. That's the that's the purpose of this document. That's not to say that there might not be a security uh, addendum or something like that. But basically, we've been assuming that uh, that we don't need that for the infrastructure network, uh, and that the, that if there is such functionality uh, needed somewhere, the place where it's going to be needed is at the um, at the edge. So, in other words. Uh, the RFC 7084 router might well prevent communication from the internet to hosts on both the infrastructure network and the stub network. But uh, but we don't have we don't have an explicit function talked about in this document for doing the same thing between the stub network and the infrastructure network. Um, we've we've talked about this before and. I think we concluded that it was reasonable to leave that out of this document. Um, um, although I think there I certainly has. Over... Go ahead. Yeah, I think I was over reading the term communicate. So reachability is fine, but communi I, I look at communicate slightly different than the reachability. So that's why I had this confusion. Oh, so in other words, you're, the distinction you're drawing is that there is reachability in the sense that we know how to send a packet as opposed to there's. Yeah communication in a sense that we are able to get a packet across that connection. Yeah, okay, actual so. communication back and forth versus just the reachability. So I like the heading that we only talk about providing reachability, but when we are writing this paragraph, we used term communicate with host. Okay, um, this is this is starting to look. I mean, these this this is now. Uh, we, we're 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 delving into weasel words here. Um, I, I I feel like, you know, I, I, I see your point, 
but I feel like this is making the text harder to read. And it's not clear to me that it's actually like the, the point of writing this text was really to get people to understand what we're trying to do. Um, so uh, maybe it would be better to just add clarifying text. Like I, I kind of like, Oh, uh, uh, let's take it this way that this is a good starting point. If I come up with some improvement, I can suggest the changes later on. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it's it's just so out of scope right now. Uh, the, the, any kind of filtering is out so out of scope for this document that that having text in the document to try and support that feels like it's just uh, making our life needlessly difficult. No, oh, that's fair. Okay, so uh, if you're okay with that, um, let's see. Oh, okay. What's the name of this issue? Uh, Issue number looking closely at this commit to make sure there aren't any weirdness. Uh, so document uh, uh, just have the original text. All right. So I'm just creating a pull request here. Okay. And then uh, if you guys are okay with the change that we just looked at, I can merge this. I'm hearing no objections. Okay. No objection. So, <laughs> like unmute is working. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so I just merged it, uh, which hopefully means we have one fewer issues now. Let's see if that actually worked. It looks like it did. Okay, so I'm gonna once again go. I'm gonna go back to issues. So Karen, if you can uh, re-enable sharing for me. Okay, so remove text that allows the L flag to be zero. I think we did that, didn't we? There's a pull request for that, so uh, linked to this one. Right. Okay. So uh, you can uh, click it on the right if you want to see, uh, I think. All right. Okay, so this appears to not have conflict. So the change is the exception, we're deleting this text. So the A autonomous configuration flag, you, you uh, 
okay, uh, must be set and the L flag. All right, so we're changing that to this, the A flag bit. Okay, good, so we got that must be set and the L flag bit must be set. Link layer technologies, yeah, so that's what we agreed on. So uh, should we just merge this? Yep. Okay. Okay for me. All right, let's merge it. All right. Uh, okay. So I guess we just go back to the issue tracker. All right. So we just did. I don't know what number that was, but um, get the mission stub router require to stop sending RAs when in state suitable. Why? Okay. So, uh, when entering the state, the router must discontinue. So this is right. All right. Yeah. So this is a good point. We still need to send RAs so that we can send routes. Yeah. So that seems to be uh, something to correct. Yeah. So what should we be saying here? So let me just look at. Uh... Okay. Uh... All right. So there's a couple of things to say here. Uh... So state suitable. We may still have a deprecated prefix. So uh, when a new host appears on the AL and sends an initial router solicit, if it does not receive a suitable online prefix, it will not be able to communicate. Consequently, the stub router must monitor router solicits and advertisements. To accomplish this, we have two complementary methods, router staleness detection and neighbor unreachability detection. The router must listen for router advertisements for each suitable route uh, that, okay, so this is fine. Um, if an RA beacon interval arrives and there are no router advertisements as suitable prefixes, then the router must move this interface to state begin advertising. Okay, so yeah, this is just wrong. Um, the sense in which this is wrong is that we're, um, we're not, uh, basically in, I think in this state machine, in all of the states, we're going to be sending router advertisements. So we've got state advertising suitable, we've got state deprecating. Uh, and then we've got state, okay, so, so, so in state suitable, um, So we don't actually talk, there's actually a state that's, that's or a, a, a kind of a, a state-y thing that is missing from this section or from this, yeah, this whole section, which is, do we have, an, do we have a stub network? Um, we're just assuming that we always have a stub network um, and that there's a prefix on the stub network. And of course, that's not, entirely true. Um, we might not have a stub network or we might not yet have a prefix on the stub network. I don't think that's a huge problem. Um, what I would suggest is that in state suitable that we only send RAs if we have a route to a prefix on the stub network. Um, but 
but that, that's for other states as well, right? Uh, well, in the other states, we'd be doing that anyway. So, so I guess what I'm saying here is that uh, we actually need a separate section here, which let me just, let me just sort of add, because this isn't really part of the state machine. Um, let's see. Purpose of the state machine is to ensure that at all times when a new host arrives, it's able to acquire. Okay, so uh, uh, so you guys aren't looking at my Emacs window, right? No. <laughs> Let, let's switch back to Emacs. Oops. Sorry, can I make a quick suggestion here? Uh, so um, the at the very same time, I was actually also looking at the implementation we have in the open mm -hmm. thread. As, like these are states we track, but uh, there are basically multiple states, I think, as was, Ted was also mentioning, right? There is a state of do we have anything inside the stop router? And mm -hmm. that triggers us to send RAs because we want to basically advertise an RIO. The other mm -hmm. state is like onlink prefix manager. Have we are we advertising the onlink or is there already a good onlink on the network that like we can mm -hmm. use? And then there is a third state of, or third like let's say thing to track is of, do we have any deprecating prefixes, which right. may be more than one even in some corner case, edge yeah. cases. Yeah. So, so let's, let me, let me write some text here and you can tell me whether you think this makes sense at because I think you're, you're exactly right. Um, so, uh, so the first thing to say is um, during all of the states mentioned here, except for uh, state unknown, um, the snack router is expected to Okay, and so here's the, <laughs> so I'm gonna actually just contradict this test text directly right now. Um, so stub router is expected to treat the inner, the, inter, the infrastructure interface as an advertising interface as described in here. So the reason I'm saying this is because I think that in all of these states, so the, the, the possible exception of state unknown, and I'm not convinced that we should even make that exception, but the reason I say that is because if we don't know what the state of the infrastructure network is, there's not much point in advertising a route. Um, and if we advertise a route a route to the stub network during state unknown, uh, we're going to have to re-advertise that RA as soon as we come out of state unknown if we need to advertise an RA. And so it's just going to mean that we're going to send a whole bunch of extra multicasts that we don't need to send in very short order. So I think it's okay to wait until we escape state unknown before we start sending RAs. Hence, this is why I'm saying this. So during all states except for state unknown, the snack router is expected in state unknown in order to avoid sending uh, an RA uh, there are two uh, sets of information if neither
So, uh, and, and this gets to your point, Apton, that these are actually independent of the state machine. Like basically we just, whenever we know of a prefix, a route to a prefix that we should be advertising, we advertise it. Um, So in, uh, I, I made that clarification. Whenever we have a reachable, which is to say not link scoped prefix on the SMAC network, we include uh, an RIO option in the RA on the infrastructure network indicating that that prefix is reachable through the SMAC router uh thread has a type of prefix called a mesh local prefix which is a uh it's a it's a ula prefix but it's not it's link scoped so it won't work um for routing so therefore there's no no purpose in advertising it and we wouldn't want to advertise it that's why i made that exception yeah it's mesh scoped you could also say uh, there's also a mesh well, open idf I, I, yeah i mean I don't know. Is is there is there an ITF term mesh scoped as opposed to link scoped? No, realm local it's now called. So that's the mesh scoped one. And that's the official term. Uh, interesting. Um, so if you say not, yeah. I think you were saying not linked scope to it. It is also uh, linked local. It's not good, but also realm local scope is also not good. Yeah. By definition. Uh, so you could also work with the scope number. So it's like uh, uh, scope number is four or higher. So it's basically uh, admin local and global and. Okay. This is, is our, we're talking now about multicast address scopes, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but it's uh, I think okay. the same scoping mechanism was uh, yeah. defined for unicast addresses. Although right. in IPv6, it's not uh, not really used apart from link local, and, and the rest is yeah. okay. considered global. That's fine, though. Uh, so, so that's great. This this yeah. gives us something to refer to. Um, so. Uh, uh, Okay, so so we now have RC seventy three forty six. Um, A reference for this and so that should make it clear uh we include an rio option on the infrastructure network to include to indicate okay uh, uh it is important to note that it is possible for a prefix to be advertised and then withdrawn on the snack network but uh, sorry for n routable prefix to be then withdrawn but uh, for it to still be valid and for there to still be some 
communication occurring using that prefix in order to avoid uh, prematurely interrupting communication, uh, the snack router must advertise, must maintain a list of prefixes Okay, so that's a lot more verbose than we were being before, but I think it's good. Um, and so I think, Epton, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this addresses your concern. Then are you on mute? Hi guys, can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. No I think what you said makes sense. Sorry. Okay. All right. So, um, in the interest, but one more, one more suggestion. Sorry, before we yes. move on, one more thought that came to me um, regarding the precating prefixes. Um, we may have the situation that uh, we are advertising the onlink prefix ourselves as a as a like a stop router, and have a deprecating prefix as well. Like the corner case that I see possible is uh, like in the thread we say the onlink prefix that the devices the, the devices advertise is generated from the uh, extended pan ID of the thread network. Uh, it's not right. likely, but it's possible that the extended pan ID of the thread network gets changed. And I think how to handle it in that case is that we deprecate the old prefix and then start advertising the new. So we can be in this combo state that have we are advertising and we have an old one that we also deprecating. Okay, looks like that is now dropped. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Well, that was fun. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so, so Apton, I think you're talking about the prefix that's advertised on infrastructure. Right, the online prefix is advertising infrastructure. Correct, correct. Okay, so so what you said is right, but this is the wrong section to talk about it. No, no, I know. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just no, no, but just think basically like we have this notion yeah. of these estates that are exclusive, that like you are either in deprecating a state or in advert, like yeah. in the I think it's called advertising state. But I was saying that like right. there may be this combo state that I have something to advertise and also something to deprecate. Like there is a deprecating state as well. Oh, so, okay, so you're talking about when there's two prefixes. Yes. Um, so the only thing is, um, in that case, there isn't actually really any need to continue sending that prefix. Like, either a host has it and has an address on it, or they don't. And so, you know, we, of course, we want to send one RA that Goodbye. explicitly deprecates it, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't have to continue sending RAs deprecating it. So, but you're right. We have to we have to address that. We have to say how to do that, and that's that's a good point. Because like when I originally wrote the code that I that I did for this like years ago, um, I uh, I just would send you know every time it was time to send an RA, I would send an RA deprecating the prefix again. Um, and if we're sending an RA anyway, then it's not a bad thing to do that. 
um, but it's not strictly necessary. Um, so my code right now actually only includes the, the, the deprecated PIO the first time it's deprecated. And then after that, it doesn't send it again. And the assumption is that, that any host that is still using that PIO is going to, you know, is going to see the new prefix that has a longer preferred invalid lifetime and choose that prefix anyway. So we don't actually need to worry about it. Yep, I agree. I was thinking of the same that like, is there any value in continuing to like, have, like yeah. include this as PIO on the, uh, like on the infrastructure side. So yeah, I'm look, I was looking like why we added it. I, my, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this was uh, more to, but basically we're tracking this prefix that is being deprecated uh, more so that uh, like earlier we had this model that we advertised the full prefixes on the stop router. Mm -hmm. On the stop router side, we said, hey, I still have route towards this uh, old unlinked prefix that existed before. So that's why we were tracking it before. But now we have simplified it, at least inside of inside the thread side, to say, use the default route or use the EULA route to encompass everything. So you don't need to, we don't need to explicitly remember that, hey, I still need to uh, like advertise yep. the route on the stop, stop router side that this route was is being deprecated. So yeah, I think we yeah. can actually simplify a lot of this logic. Yeah, I mean, so in the case of um, what we're writing this document is if the stub network is a, is a Wi-Fi network just because or, a, you know, basically just like an Ethernet or something, just because it's 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 a convenient way to talk about the problems that we face. So I think we need to have a, uh, some text in the document that talks about what you just said, because I think it's important for the uh, yeah. for the the constrained network use case. And then for the RA use case, we actually it's fine to just keep advertising all the routes probably um but uh so let me see all right so so we just added all this text here and then that means that uh i'm gonna just delete this text about uh must Dread, discontinue. Since, you dropped, uh, Dread, since you dropped out you need to share your screen again oh i'm sorry <laughs> i just I don't know why I dropped. I, I went downstairs to, to get some coffee. I guess my Bluetooth failed and, and Meet Echo decided that that meant that rather than reattempting to use the Bluetooth, it was going to uh, uh, just drop me completely. So sorry about that. Anyway, so here's the document. We're back. Um, so I think I can just delete this text now. Like I think this text is, is actually just not needed anymore. Is that right? Yeah, the discontinued text that, that can go, I think. Uh, yeah. I, I did have a question about the other thing. Um, you mentioned the uh, Realm Local Multicast Scopa. Yes. And you mentioned, hey, it's for multicast. And then I thought it's yeah. more in general, but it looks like it's actually defined for multicast only. Okay. This document and this update RFC basically only defines it for multicast. So that uh, means we don't have a basically realm reference. local or admin local uh, unicast <laughs> yeah so uh, all right so that that uh, needs to change then again i think yeah let's see um so it's basically so, reach, reachable is correct i think yeah yeah it looks like maybe let's see rc 4007 not updated so that's the most recent one so scope zones each interface each link zone indices this is super unhelpful <laughs> uh, Yeah, it's doesn't look like it's really finding anything. No, this is useless. All right, so I mean, it's not useless. I'm sure it's very useful. But, um, well, it has, it has link local and global scope is the yeah. contents of this document in RC four. Yeah, seven. I'm just trying to see if there's any. So they have, yeah. There's a later document that talks about site local, but that's not what we want either. That would be equivalent to admin local, I think. So, yeah, I think uh, you're right. We should probably 
just, uh, I mean, I, I think it's clear enough, like, like to my mind, uh, there isn't actually a meaningful distinction between mesh local and link local on thread. Uh, the reason I say that is because I know that the, the, the idea is that the, the, each hop in the mesh is being treated as a link on thread from the thread vernacular. But from the ITF vernacular, I don't think we actually need to make that distinction. Like, like, you know, all of us doing thread work already know what we're talking about. So if I say link scoped here, I think people will know what that means. And I think like we amongst us who do thread work also know what that means. Like we know that we're talking about mesh local here. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that should be a okay to say link scoped. Link scoped here. Uh, I think actually, if, if you think about thread, it's based on six low pan and that has a model of uh, yeah link local at least yeah. what what that means and that is dependent on how the routing is implemented so you can have the yeah there, there is a variant possible where the whole mesh uh, is treated as a single ip link and there's also the the model where each hop in the mesh is treated as a single link and you can have hybrid even between the two mm -hmm. so uh, it's uh, pretty complicated but okay we don't need to dive yeah. into that uh, here yeah, I think I think that's not we're not we're not we're not making people smarter by by giving more detail on this. Um, yeah, but now link local should yeah it should be the reverse basically. Yeah? So it's anything that's not link local then. Okay, so whenever we know of a reachable uh, not, thank you. Yeah, uh, scope is not link locable pre prefix. We include an array. Okay, so. Uh, Okay. And so this is issue sixty. All right, so uh, let's switch back to the um, The tracker again. All right, so unless anybody objects, I'm going to merge this. OK, there is another issue closed. OK, so um, wait, I thought we closed that, no? Looks like the closes didn't work. So I'm going to just, uh, let's see. Yeah, I usually uh, do it, write it without the S, so close. Yeah, that's probably in what the, happened. In the description body, also not in the title. So that yeah. At least there it should work, that combination. Yeah. All right. We're making progress. This is exciting. Um, okay. So we need to specify. We already, we've now done that. Uh, okay. So we. OK, 
Okay, so uh, so we still need to do the other bit. Um, let's see. So, um, oh, Esco, since you're here, um, let's see, more details on DHCP6 PD conditions. Okay, so this is actually interesting. This came up, uh, we have a test for this in our test suite. Um, so, uh, so right now, the way that the Apple implementation of this works is that if you get a prefix delegated, um, and then the adjacent infrastructure link changes, uh, we don't change the prefix on the stub network necessarily um and so this is interesting i don't know i i think that what would happen is that the dhcp PD, v6 pd client would attempt to renew and if it got a response back from the dhcp server saying you can't use that prefix anymore then it would stop using it but if there's no dhcp v6 server on the link then it's not going to get a response back and so it's going to keep using it um, and we had a big discussion about this like two days ago uh, and concluded that it wasn't actually a problem and that in fact that it's better not to change it because particularly on thread changing the uh the prefix that we advertise is actually expensive and we don't want to do it unless we have to so uh you know one thing that could happen here is that you know the, the link could change in the sense that like you know your router goes away for a while and so you know ipv6 service potentially goes away on that link temporarily and then comes back and changing the the uh, off uh, the off stub network routable prefix um, in that circumstance doesn't really help us it doesn't do any good uh, and potentially it does harm so so we concluded that we should just keep using that prefix until the lease expires, at which point we're forced to change prefixes. Uh, so did you guys kind of get what, I, what I'm talking about there? Yeah, for me, it's okay. Uh, roughly clear, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, so I, I guess th that to me means that the answer is, um, so, First of all, we don't actually really talk about the mechanics of a DHCP v6 PD client here. That is to say in the document and we shouldn't, but you're right that we should have a reference to it. Um, and uh, Yeah, there, there is some new text then, also uh, in the update of uh, 8415. Right. I'm also referencing that here in this issue. So it's... Uh, I think based on our feedback, uh, that was also changed in the the BIS uh, document. Okay, so uh, now is so is the section reference that you added here to the BIS document? Um, yeah. Oh, that didn't include a section number. I think there could be that it's just okay. the same one. Oh wait, there is so, a reference. Yeah, there is a. Uh, It's only not a number, but it's the name refreshing configuration configuration in. Let's see where that goes to. That's eighteen two twelve. It goes to. Okay, let's see if that's a thing. Eighteen two. It's the same no, section number. Yeah, eighteen two twelve. That's good. Okay, so whenever a client may have moved to a new link, prefixes may no longer be appropriate. Client is reconnected. Some sleep, change the access points. So there's some new content uh, 
place there, especially the last one is, is added. The last one. Yeah, the bullet was the last one. It's, uh... Else, if only network information was obtained from the server. <laughs> well, I mean the one on top. <laughs> okay, sorry. That was, yeah, there was a couple of more things added, but that was one of the example uh, conditions uh, when the prefix could have changed. Uh -huh. So it's basically network interface disconnection event followed by connection event. Right. Yeah. And so when it detects that it may have moved to a new link and have attained addresses, should initiate a confirm reply, any responding server. Yeah. So that actually covers the case where we switch to a different DHC, a different IPv6 capable network with a DHCP server. Um, Client has any valid delegated prefixes, must initiate rebind. If client is only, if not associated with, should. Yeah, so this is the last part is not about uh a new link but uh, that's actually the existing link there is significant uh, change on there yeah. and uh, the available prefixes right so, new, new aspect. so uh should initiate a renew reply confirm reply or information okay so uh and then um so let's look at this one It receives no responses before the process terminates, should continue to use any leases. So yep. I think that covers what I just said. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's see if we have appetite for actually adding some text here. Um, Yeah, at least the, the, the specific section or, or sections could be referred to. And the idea was, well, maybe we could do that in the BIS, uh, refer to the BIS document, and you get the updated yes. uh, versions with more details about these change conditions. Yeah. The risk always with this is that if a section is added, the section numbers won't match. But I guess if we refer to a specific version, it should be OK. Um, Okay, so yeah. uh, still the same numbering here. They, they decided, I think, to keep the same numbering. Well, it's not really a decision. It's like it's you know what they what they just what they did is not add any sections. <laughs> so, which is fine, but that's that's the challenge. So, all right, uh, I'm going to switch back to Emacs again. I really wish there was a way to share two windows. All right, so uh, let's see. So using DHCP v6, if a DHCP prefix are both available, then the stub editor must attempt to acquire a prefix. Using a prefix, by contrast, if the prefix generated uh, Okay. Um,
So if the client provides a new prefix, Actually, this is maybe redundant. Oh, okay. Should explicitly deprecate the old prefix uh, at the same time that it first. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> yeah, I, I hear that. that. I hear that all day normally at home. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <From> neighbors. <laughs> Sometimes oh, yeah, a neighbors week long. Are... Oh, that sucks. Uh, it's not that loud. For yeah. Us, right? okay. All right. Well, so hopefully that won't last too long. Um, so the second. Okay, it's not uh, bad on our end, Ted. Good. All right. Pretty bad on my end. Uh, I've got the door closed too. All right, so let's see if I can continue thinking while this noise is going on. So the stack router must not use the prefix. Uh, okay, if the prefix, uh, the DHCP v6 pd client uh, determines that the prefix being Provided The name is that we use for uh, I get the only link prefix. Now, there's a question should we do that as soon as we see that the like, like the, the, the PD prefix might still be valid. Um, I think in this case, we should behave pretty much the same as if we'd gotten a new prefix from PD. If the uh, Actually, I'd like it. I think we should not, in this case, we don't have an explicit event. It might just be that we're not able to get a new prefix right now. And so it probably makes sense to just continue using it until it expires. But there comes a time, like if it's, um, you know, let's say, let's say normally we're asking for like a half hour lease on our prefix, I think. I don't know if that's actually true. Uh, if that were the case, then I would say after, if we get to within six minutes without being able to successfully renew the lease, then at that point we should deprecate that prefix and switch to the ULA prefix. Does that make sense? Um, thinking about it. <laughs> sure. I think it says in the text valid uh, in the first sentence, so uh, it reads as if it uh, only happens when the, pre, the, the old prefix is no longer valid. Yeah. So it keeps using it until it's, yeah, really time and then something has to happen. Or maybe. Well, so, so in, in the case of, in the case of a replacement prefix, we actually do what I think is the correct behavior because we have a clear indication from the network that the old prefix is deprecated here, right? Like we got a new prefix yeah. that tells us that, so we should stop advertising the old prefix. 
Um, yeah, which earlier, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so here we, in, in the case that, that uh, we don't get a renewal, uh, it might just be that the, the DHCP server went away. So, uh, yeah, and uh, it reads that it switches at the end of the period. So when it's really not valid anymore, it will. Yeah, but that's 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 yeah. basically pretty abrupt. So I'm thinking uh, it is unable to renew its lease on the prefix. Uh, on the uh, so the current. <laughs> So, so this is this is our signal from the network that we're probably out of luck. So, less than twenty percent of the remaining lifetime of the prefix is remains. Then the gives us a little bit of a little bit of runway um, so we don't just automatically deprecate the prefix just because we weren't able to renew it once but if we persistently can't renew it then we deprecate it um, and then So that might be overly prescriptive because uh, 
I think we care less in the case, like if we, if we have a stub network that's just got a regular non-constrained network as the snack network, um, then it's perfectly fine to just advertise two prefixes on the snack, snack network. And, you know, the cost of changing prefixes are relatively low on a constrained network, e.g. thread, um, that's not the case. So, uh, so I think in the case of, of thread, we do want this behavior, but in the case of like Wi-Fi or something, we probably don't. Um, I don't know that it's really important to make that distinction though. I think this is pretty clear and I think it'll work in all cases. So does anybody object to that? No objections, no. <laughs> okay. I think All I right. just uh, had, a, had a thought about you mentioning the, yeah, the 20% of the remaining uh, lifetime in the paragraph yeah. above that. I was just thinking like, oh, there's probably some rules in the uh, 8415 document and the BIS document also about, uh, yeah, when uh, the client should renew such a delegated prefix lease. There is at least uh, the word oh, lifetime is mentioned like uh, lots of times, hundred more hundred thirty yeah. times. There's probably something there, but I I don't know the details. Well, yeah. So I think there are some constants mentioned somewhere. Let me see if there's if there's uh, yeah, there also this, uh, server controlled uh, yeah time mentioned about when to renew the lease. At least that was somewhere. Well. well there's the Psalm XRT, but that's for, uh, that's oh, yeah. for reducing solicit traffic. And there's the Inf Max RT. Um, those are, those are actual options. Somewhere I thought there was a list of constants. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, there's also the 1824 mentions that the server controls the time at which the client should contact the server to extend the lifetimes on the signed leases. Oh, does it? But it's something with uh, related to timer. It just says timers, but mentions that the server has control over the timers. Server controls the time, oh, through the T1 and T2 values. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh, so at time T1, the client initiates a renew reply. At time T, if time T1 or T2 has been set to zero, the client may, uh, at its discretion, it must follow the rules defined in section 14.2. In certain cases, T1 and T2 may be zero. Uh, this is an indication that the renew and rebind times are left to the discretion of the client. However, they're not completely discretionary. When T1 or T2 are set to zero, the client must choose a time to avoid packet storms. In particular, it must not transmit immediately. If it receives multiple IA options, pick renew and rebind transmission time so that all IA options are handled in one exchange if possible. Yeah, that's all good. Um, yeah, so that's not really giving us any meaningful guidance. Um, so what we could say is that, uh, okay, so we've got, uh, oh. Timeout. Yeah, so, um, so T two, There's some good doc, good text in here about how to pick these values, but uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. So, um, Uh, 
This is actually, this text is actually kind of dumb. Um, there's really no reason to do uh, exponential back off for renews. Um, what you should do instead is just periodically send a renew during that interval uh, with a substantial gap, but that's not what this document says. So I might actually send them a comment about this. <laughs> um, so it's not actually saying what values to use for T1 and T2, I don't think. Let's see. Yeah, so it looks like so, something that the server uh, sets, right? Uh, or can yeah, decide the not server, to set. Right, the server sets it, but but um, let's see. I'm just going to... Uh, the time interval after which the client is expected to contact the server. Uh, this is not giving any guidance as to what these should be. Yeah, that's something that the server implementation can just decide, right? Yep. Uh, or configure yep. even. So it could be configured in a good way or, or a bad way. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. I'm a little surprised that this text, I don't see any text that says how to figure out what these should be. Okay, here we go, T1, time interval. Yeah, it doesn't say. <laughs> okay. Uh, Uh, server selects T1 and T2 values to allow the client to extend the lifetimes of an address. So short periods of time recommended values are, okay, here we go, 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.8. So that's exactly what I was, so so basically instead of saying, so so I'm, I'm looking, this is section uh, 21.4, almost at the end of the section. It says to use, um, uh, 50, so T1 is 50% of the least time and T2 is 80% of the least time, which actually corresponds exactly to what I put in here, which might be why I did that unconsciously. So uh, let us say instead of T1, uh, instead of 20%, uh, so in the case that the DHCP v6 PD client is unable to renew the lease on the current uh, and the T2 for the prefix assignment xref target equals uh, Section equals twenty one dot oops twenty one dot four. So and the T two time of the prefix assignment has been reached. Then the snack router must deprecate USR prefix and begin advertising your labeling prefix. So um Uh, so the only problem with that is that actually it's possible that when we do the rebind, we'll, we'll wind up getting, the lease will wind up being renewed, in which case deprecating it wasn't necessary. So um, it might be better to say, um, 
and the time between the T2 interval for the prefix assignment and the end of the lease has been reached. So that then would be roughly 90% instead of 80%. So for a 30 minute lease, that would give us three minutes, which I think is reasonable. What do you guys think? I'm just wondering uh, where the 30 minutes comes from. Is that a kind of common thing or? Uh, so I can't remember. Uh, using prefix delegation. Stub router, stub provider prefix lifetime default 30 minutes. That's where it comes from. Okay. So, thinking, uh, I was thinking the more about the, the lifetime of the lease actually. So, uh, right. The point is, so, uh, it's not, not this value, uh, I guess. So do we actually say 30 minutes in here anywhere? I mean, do, I don't even know if that's really necessary. Um, yeah, maybe longer is better. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't see any reason. Uh, so do we give, actually say gives you more more so time I was just assuming, to renew? Yeah, I was assuming thirty minutes, but um, but I think it would be reasonable to say uh, you know to to just not specify, or we could say uh, let's see uh, HTTP v six p client can specify. Uh, can request particular lease interval for the DHCP6 delegated Yeah, I'm just looking at the lease times of my home router and what, what is shown there. And it goes like up to uh, 24 hours. Yeah, I don't know if, fine. if they, I don't know if the devices ask for 24 hours or, or they get it, but that, that's what you see in the table, like uh, remaining lease time. Yeah, that should be fine. So um, I think we, um, do we, does anybody feel like there's anything else we need to add to this section right now? Can't tell whether that silence is um, nobody yeah. thinks so or. I think it's pretty complete in a way. Like uh, at least it uh, answers the request <laughs> very well. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just make a, a pull request for this then, and I think we can probably. That can probably be our last thing for today since we're pretty close to the end and we've made actually some pretty good progress today. Um, so here, let's. Uh, yeah, there's one thing I just wanted to say uh, uh -huh. about pull requests. Uh, 
not related to this, but there was one open one to fix the build actually by moving the references section. Mm -hmm. So then the make file uh, works again. Yeah, I think if, if you have a pull request for a, a simple editorial change, yeah. you should just do it. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, the, like some of the stuff we're doing here is actually like real content. So yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. So this is issue thirty-seven. And that's going to be more details on PD. And this is issue 37. And the name is this. Okay, here's our pull request. Okay, and yeah, it looks like this actually, let's see if it closed the issue. Yes, it closed the issue. Okay, good. So we're down to 21 issues. This is progress. Um, all right. So um, I feel like Karen and Darren, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like we've, uh, we now have 15 minutes left in our time slot. And uh, I'm not sure that yeah. it makes sense to open another one. Uh, no, I think I'm happy to close now um, before mm -hmm. starting any new section. Um, okay, this is, as I said, this is the last virtual before we meet yep. face to face. So offline, what can we do? Because before the cutoff, we would want to upload the latest version. Yes. So what I would suggest is that um, we, uh, so our cutoff for submissions is, uh, let's see. Two weeks before twenty uh, first. Let's say roughly around tenth of July or so. Yeah. Tenth of July, you said. Uh, cut off is. Uh, Here we go. Submission cut off is the eighth. Eight. Okay. All right. So um, let us. Uh, maybe so to so we've been kind of doing this thursday thing um the cutoff is a monday let's say um thursday what is that thursday next week will be 27th and the one after short so the fourth so let's say on the fourth, um, and maybe you guys can track this issue. I'll try to track it as well. Let's try and get all of as many, like, you know, I have some stuff assigned. Um, there are some editorial changes that I think would be straightforward and we should just do like the snack, the stub router to snack router change. Um, I think Esco, you had a couple of editorial things that you wanted to do that are pretty straightforward. So maybe if we could do all of those and then, um, uh, it might be auspicious if somebody other than me did the last minute submission, but maybe that could be done on that Friday. So like whatever is in before that Friday goes in. And, and I think, you know, we, we have, uh, we've accomplished a lot in this interval between ITFs. And so I don't think we need to feel bad about, uh, you know, if, if all we had was what we have so far, that would be great, but let's see, maybe we can get some more done before then. Yeah, I wouldn't mind just cleaning up editorial uh, from the issue list so that we have core yeah. content related stuff to worry about yeah. after the ITF. Yeah, so yeah. one thing I would say as a protocol is before doing a change, assign the issue yourself so that we don't wind up having two people accidentally do the same change. 
Yep. And just create the peers, which will, yeah. so before we merge anything, we will have peers. So that, is, uh, that takes care of any conflicts. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yep, that's okay. great. Thank you guys. Um, we started with DHCP stuff, so that means we are making a good progress. And uh, yeah. see you in Vancouver then. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you again. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.